Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me. If this is your first time here, please subscribe to the channel and check out the other videos. And if you're here for a second, third, or fourth time, thank you so much for coming back and getting creative. Alright guys, this is going to be another fun painting for my beginner painters. So grab your supplies, transfer your traceable to your surface, and as always, make sure you take your progress photos. Now for those of you that are, want to pause the video and draw what you see, just pause right here and um, transfer that to your canvas and then we'll be getting um, moving right along. We are going to use a little bit of a palette knife here, so we're going to make a light raw sienna and that is going to be white with a tiny amount of raw sienna, going pretty light. Now, if yours is a little lighter or darker than mine, that's okay. And there are various shapes of knives that you can try. I'm using kind of a bit of a smaller one here, but if you've got the standard uh, palette knife, you can use that as well. You can also do this with a brush. You do not have to do it with a knife. Um, just trying to give you a different um, application process with the palette knife scraping. And because this is a scraping method, we're not putting it on super thick. And this is more my professional style of painting with the knife scraping. We're going to scrape a few other colors on top of here. And you'll also notice that it is kind of a, a nice stress relieving method. Now, if you have to mix your color two or three times, don't stress about getting the exact same shade each time. Like I said, we're going to put some other colors on top of it um, and kind of give some hints of some shadows and highlights. But we're kind of pulling this uh, sandy color all the way around the star sand dollar. It was called a starfish around the sand dollar and right up um, to the lines where the little wave, the incoming wave is. And there's a few little holes in the sand dollar that we'll be adding um, this to as well. Again, we'll be using the knife. If you do want to do this with a brush, I do recommend fully watching the whole steps for the sand and then breaking it down to what you need if you're going to use a brush. Um, because with the brush, you'll do a little bit more wet on wet blending compared to the scraping palette knife method um, will allow it to kind of dry in between each layer. So again, adjust to what you need. And if you want to use different tools, crayons, markers, colored pencils, go right ahead um, and utilize whatever medium that you have. So here you can see I'm grabbing that direct raw sienna. Um, and scraping it right on top of the light raw sienna that I had already put on there. Now I didn't let this dry, so some of the color may change a little bit, and just kind of play with this. Uh, we're putting a shadow element in there. We will add a touch of black later um, to go a little bit darker, but as you do this, whether you're using the knife or the brush, notice that a small amount of pigment will actually go a long way um, for these darker shadows. And it's easier to add a small amount of pigment and then add more later if you need to compared to adding too much. So kind of like right here, I grab just a tiny, tiny amount of that black paint. I'm going to put it in the areas that I want, and then I'll go back and kind of scrape that into the base. And same thing if you're using the brush, you just kind of place it where you want it, and then you'll go back and blend it into the base color. All right, so here I wiped off that uh, knife. You're going to wipe off your brush and then going back and just kind of uh, blending that into the base, like I already said multiple times. Um, and if you end up putting too much of the black on there, because like I said, it's a uh, pretty strong and powerful color, you can scrape it off and wipe it on the paper towel and then go back and kind of reapply and start to mix. Again, just kind of play with this. Your brain's getting comfortable with a new tool. Your brain's getting comfortable with um, blending and your different shadows and this kind of magical illusion that you're creating as we get um, three different value shades on here. And the value shades are your light, your medium color, and then your dark shadow. All right, you're doing it good. If you um, haven't taken a deep breath yet, go ahead and do that. I do notice that a lot of my first time and beginner painters tend to hold their breath because they're nervous. It does not help your process. So remember to breathe. I'm proud of you for painting at home. And if you do happen to be on a stretched canvas, I recommend that you carry this color um, when you reach the edge just around the sides of your canvas and it looks really nice uh, when you hang it on the wall having that happen. All right, so we did let this dry. We're going to go back and put a second layer on there and we're making that light raw sienna. And because it's dry and I'm using pressure with the knife, 
we'll still be able to see some of those darker shades underneath. And this is a great place that if maybe you got too much of the black on there and you need to tone it down, you can scrape this color on top of it. And like I said, again, with your pressure um, and the transparency of the paint that we're using, it will allow that underneath color to kind of shine through. So you still have your, um, your value scale, your rendering, uh, but it's not as bright or intense. Do trust your instincts as you are doing this. If you're inclined to add maybe a little bit more or go in with a different color than I am, um, trust that. Go ahead and do that. So I'm going to add a bit more shadows um, with the raw sienna. And again, just kind of placing that in a few areas and then scraping it back through. And I, I personally kind of like the texture that this scraping of the knife um, gives. So that's why I, I used it for the sand. We will be switching to the brush in the next step. So you guys are doing great. I'm proud of you. So pause the video, take your progress photo, and we will be switching over to the brush here. Um, and we're going to put the water in and we're going to start with a super light blue. So I pulled a little bit of that white aside and then starting to pull the white in. Um, you can actually do it the opposite, pull some white out and then add a tiny amount of blue. And I'm using that middle flat brush. If you need to use the large flat brush, go right ahead. Or if you're on a gigantic canvas and you're using something different, um, utilize the tools that you need based on the canvas size or just what you need. We're going to fill this whole area in with this light blue. And again, if you're on that stretched canvas, carry this right around the side. I am slightly overlapping the sand color a little bit um, with the blue pigment, with the blue paint. Um, we will put some little white caps on at the end of the painting. And same with uh, the other colors. If you have to mix this light blue a second or third time, don't stress about getting the exact same shade. We're going to do some wet on wet blending next with the darker blue. And here we go, grabbing a spot of blue. Again, I'm going to slap it in a few areas, wipe my brush off, and then go back and blend it into that base lighter blue. And this is called wet on wet blending. Now, if you can kind of see that I'm holding the brush at a 45 degree angle, this kind of help lets me use the side of the brush and helps keep my brush strokes a little bit smoother. Um, when you hold your brush kind of perpendicular to the canvas, you'll have a bit more expressive brush strokes that show up. Um, so play with the angle of your brush and how you're moving it um, just to kind of see what you like. There's no right or wrong way to paint. I tell my students the only way to fail at painting is to not paint at all. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to slap some of that white on there for some highlights. And in comparison to the blue that we put on there, you will notice that the white kind of diffuses rather quickly. So the more you move your brush, the more the two shades blend together. So if you lose some of that lighter area, just reapply the white and um, maybe just less brush strokes this time. All right, you guys are doing great. Take another progress photo. We're going to move into a light gray, and that is white with a tiny amount of gray. And mine's going to be rather light. Hopefully you guys can see that it is going to be a light gray. The reason we're doing this, we're going to fill in the whole sand dollar with this light gray. We're going to do some wet on wet blending. But by putting a light gray on here, when we put our white on top of this, it gives us a slight contrast compared to putting pure white paint onto a pure white canvas or um, so that way we have some contrast and it shows up and this is part of the magical illusion of painting uh, something that looks kind of 3d on a flat 2d surface so it's one of the other things i like telling all my students is that you are a magician you are transforming this flat surface into a 3d illusion and uh, that's pretty awesome all right so just filling in um, the rest of that sand dollar then we're going to go with a little bit darker gray and put some shading on there and again this does not have to be perfect as you do this you are strengthening your power of observation by observing what you see on the video mimicking that on your canvas you're strengthening that eye hand coordination all right so now we're going to go for a medium gray and it does look like i added a tiny amount of the raw sienna to it just to warm it up um, but i'd say go ahead and just go with a medium gray one or two shades darker than what you were using. Again, we're just going to place this in a few areas. And if you kind of notice when you place it on there that maybe it's not dark enough, go ahead, make it a little bit darker, and then reapply. Um, again, just observe where these are going, the general shape that I make, um, and just mimic that to the best of your ability. You guys are doing great. I'm loving all the photos that have been coming through. 
um, all the emails and so many people saying that they have discovered the joy of painting. Uh, so I just, I love it. And, and that feedback, those photos, those emails are definitely the reason Paint with Lovejoy is still making videos and still moving forward. So thank you. All right, so here we're grabbing the white. Again, we're going to place it in a few areas. I'll wipe off the brush and then we'll go back and kind of blend it in. This is going to be rather subtle since my light gray was so light. Um, so if you need to pause the video and just kind of observe what you can see. I know monitors um, and tablets sometimes have different colors, different um, color balances. So hopefully you guys can see this at home uh, with no problems while you're painting. And again, kind of holding that brush at that 45 degree angle as I blend this in. I do recommend that you get out of your chair and look at your painting from a distance of five to 10 feet away. This is the normal viewing distance for most things in life and especially artwork. Um, so just start getting in the groove of doing that. So now we're going to go with a light gray, um, kind of light to medium gray, and we're adding a bit more of the raw sienna to this. We do want it a little bit warmer. I want it to stand out just a touch um, from the background of the sand dollar or the base coat of the sand dollar. Again, um, I think in this one I'll make a few marks and then realize I have to make it darker, so go back and adjust. Again, nothing is wrong with adjusting your color after you apply it um, to the surface. All right, and here you can see that I applied a little bit and then realized it wasn't dark enough, so I went back and added more black. So like I was saying earlier, just adjust for what you need um, even after you've started to make some marks on your canvas. We are using the small pointy brush and we're doing that kind of stylized star. These are basically just kind of curved lines. Just take it one little section at a time. And as you're using the brush, kind of treat it like a pencil using just the tip of the brush and holding it kind of perpendicular to the canvas. Also notice that every couple of brush strokes, I do go back and grab more paint. Um, so that way I'm actually applying something to the canvas. And then just added a touch more <clears throat> excuse me, a touch more black to the mixture. And just on a few of the star areas, um, we're deepening, giving it a bit more of a shadow. As well as those little openings, um, just kind of cleaning up the edges of those. They're kind of going on the left hand side, um, slightly just kind of mimicking the shape of that opening. And then on the opposite side, we'll put some white later on. All right, so now we're going to add raw sienna to the mixture we were just using and just give one more pop of a color on um, the little star design. Again, just kind of observe where I'm placing it. It's not everywhere, it's just in a few areas on the star. And again, just gives that nice pop of color, especially as you look at your painting from a distance of five to 10 feet away. All right, um, so now we're gonna do a few little outlines and just kind of pop for that last uh, dark color. So we're using black and the pointy brush and I'm not going to fully outline the sand dollar like I have done in other videos. I'm just going to put this in a few key areas. It helps kind of define the composition. Um, but like I said, it's not an entire outline. If you do prefer to do the outline and it makes it a bit more of that pop art style like in some of my other videos, go right ahead and do that. Or just kind of observe the few places that I put the black. And now we're moving back over to the pure white. Um, Again, just placing it, this is our highlight value, just placing it in a few areas uh, that will give that pop, that highlight um, on our sand dollar. Again, especially for the white, notice every couple of brush strokes, I'm going back, grabbing more paint, and I'm being rather generous with the amount of paint because I do want that white to be pretty solid because um, from a distance, the white is actually the first thing that you see and then the shadows and the mid-tones kind of help create that magical illusion. So again, applying that white pretty thick, we will move up to the large flat brush and kind of put the little waves or the little foam caps on um, our water area. And that's kind of a fun application. And again, if you are inclined to put um, this white on your sand dollar somewhere, I do not trust your instincts. They are guiding you where you need to go with your creative direction. Um, and if you don't like where you put something, you just let it dry and paint over it at a later time. So now I'm grabbing that large flat brush. We're going to hold the brush perpendicular and basically tap the brush to the canvas and then pull the brush right back. And we're going to do this along the whole length of that water line and in a few areas in the water. 
Again, you can imagine that these are the white caps of the waves kind of rolling in towards the shore. As I'm doing this tapping method, I'm actually slightly twirling uh, the brush back and forth um, as I make my mark. So that way I'm not making the exact same mark over and over and over again. This helps kind of give you a bit more of an organic flow um, to your mark making if you just slightly move the brush back and forth. So I'm really proud of you guys. You've done an excellent job today. Thanks so much for painting and just kind of keeping your creativity going. Um, let me know if you want certain subjects painted in the future. Just leave a comment or send me an email. But I'm honored that you take time out of your day and hang out with me for an hour or two while you paint. So until next time, cheers. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the process of painting and I hope you are happy with how your paintings turned out. I'm really proud of you for getting creative. As you're uploading these to social media, please tag me at or hashtag paintwithlovejoy or email me your pictures paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. I really enjoy seeing them. Um, I try to post them on social media to encourage other beginner painters um, to try the process of painting. But please share this with your community as well. Anybody who is kind of scared to paint, share your experience with them and let them know kind of how much you benefited from it and how much you enjoyed the process. So kind of share, share the fun. Um, with that being said, if you have any comments, questions, feedback, things that you want me to paint in the future, please leave a comment. I try to respond to everybody as quickly as I can. And any of the future suggestions for paintings, I add that to my production list and get to them as quickly as I can. So in the meantime, please keep getting creative. Uh, let me know how you're doing. And until next time, cheers.